But in a situation where you find that they look like the same. It's not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. But I have said that. All right, welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Daybreak on Trust TV. Now, let's take a look at some of the stories making headway on our dailies this morning. Uh, and we're going to begin with the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, the lead story there says how bandits ambushed, killed 63 vigilantes in Kebi. Uh, and the writers there say informants leaked plan to repel bandits attack. Buhari urges proactive action. Uh, and then to other stories uh, on the Daily Trust newspaper, there's a pictorial there that shows you the protest, uh, a protest rather, by some group of women, you know, all over the country, you know, to protest, you know, the gender bills that were kicked against at the National Assembly just as they were commemorating the International Women's Day. Uh, you'd also see other stories right on the top on page uh, 11. Yeah, court sack, a boy governor kicks as PDP nominates replacements. Airlines grown as aviation fuel exceeds 600 naira per litre. Uh, you'd also see other stories. Governor's wife storm National Assembly protest rejection of pro-women bills. Uh, and on page 20, many injured, shops burnt as Yoruba Hausa clash in Ogo. You know, I really don't like to hear stories about ethnicity like this. Uh, but we do hope, you know, we move away from stories like this. And you find details of that story on page 20. And on page 15, Ocean Governorship, Adeleke picks PDP ticket. Babayemi emerges parallel candidate. Uh, Reverend Son drills Boho at Kaduna Mosque. Quite very, very interesting. These are the kind of stories I like to see. Uh, well, you find the details of that story on page 20 on the Daily Trust newspaper. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next newspaper, which is the Punch newspaper. Right at the top there, at the header, you'd find CBN increases currency in circulation by 418 billion naira over cra uh, cash transactions. <laughs> Details of that on page 32. We also have APC to release zoning formula, suspends zonal congress amid confusion. PDP submits Umahi's replacement to INEC, uh, Sachs governor sacked governor sits tight and we have writers that talks about court sacking 15 lawmakers says umahi legislators can't transfer pdp votes i remain a governor echoes judgment meant to embarrass apc federal government says umahi and details of that on page two uh the lead story talks about crude oil price and man warns of hyperinflation subsidy hits 400 naira Diesel, 625 Naira. And writers here say aviation fuel hits 580 Naira per liter. Air travelers stranded to pay more. We rely on diesel. Rise in price means higher cost of production, says man. And uh, right below that uh, pictorial there, you'd find a story that says... Um, uh, International Women's Day, close gender gap between men, women and governance, says Minister. Buhari mourns as bandits kill 40 vigilantes in Kebi ambush. Power disruption looms as second Niger bridge gets April completion date. Scores injured, shops burned as Yoruba house traders clash in Ogun State. And right <laughs> below the page, you have Austrian PDP governor, uh, governorship primaries produced at Deleke. Babayemi as candidates. We have uh, on the um, unfortunate incidents that happened to Bamiche, uh, Sangwo Lu slams critics, BRT suspends operations, family demands justice. Details of that uh, on page four and five. And then Tinobo proposes meeting with APC reps caucus on presidential bid. You can, find, you can find more of that story on page seven. Okay, let's take a look at some more stories on the Nation newspaper. Uh, the nation leads uh, APC's soft landing for Buni as Sani Bello consolidates. Yobe governor Akbanu Doede eased out. Senate caucus decries uncertainty. Uh, you'd find other stories right on page 29. International Women's Day. Protest over rejected gender bills. Governor's wives join push for action. 
House to reconsider no votes. Well, that's good news. Uh, on page 27 and 28, Adeleke Babayemi claim Oshun PDP governorship ticket. Uh, and then you see the story about Electoral Act Amendment. Court can't stop us, says Senate. Now, these are some of the major stories on the nation this morning. Ira will take the finest paper, which is the final paper, which is the Guardian newspaper. And uh, we have the lead there that says court sacks Umahi deputy access 16 lawmakers over defection. And we have uh, a lot of writers. One says Umahi sues for peace, vows to appeal decision. Judgment contradictory to constitution, says counsel. PDP names Igariwe Udogo as new Ebony governor a deputy. Asks INEC to issue certificate of return to them. Charges Ebony chief judge to swear in its nominees immediately. Court can't remove them for defecting. Ozekames insists. It's too radical and a departure from a warden of our constitution. Obiarere says decision has opened a new vista, says Ugumandu. All right, uh, at the top there, you'd find stories that says total darkness looms as 14 power generation plants cripple supply. Uh, Lowen rejects court order on amendment of electoral act. Gender bills, equality, others to top agenda as Nigerians mark International Women's Day. Uh, right below that page, diesel near 650 naira per liter as firms, residents embrace on alternatives. And then we have Bello takes charge, says APC zoning formula ready. Details of that on page 26. And these are... Uh, some of the papers that that uh, we have on our list today. Okay, we have the director of news, Voice of Nigeria, Ben Shemag, in the studio with us to give us perspectives on some of these stories this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank okay. You. My pleasure. Uh, now, we're still in the mood of celebrating the International Women's Day. And yesterday we saw, you know, quite a number of women protest, you know, uh, the gender, you know, bills that were kicked against by the National Assembly. Uh, you know, in your assessment, would you say this will in any way prompt, you know, the National Assembly to rethink and go back on their decision, uh, looking at how the situation has turned out uh, eventually? Absolutely. I, I think it should um, make the lawmakers have a rethink. I actually said that um, the law itself is made for man or men for man and not man for the law. Where the law is injurious, you amend it. And that's where we are seeing the tinkering or some changes in the provisions of the Nigerian constitution. So we expect that um, there are already some green lights that the, the National Assembly will, will revisit some of the bills they had uh, thrown away. And uh, you look at the pressure. Some women organizations, local and international, they've been at the gate of the National Assembly doing a blockade and crying very loud that, look, we deserve this, we should have it, it is our right. Uh, so and I think it is good to have it so. And you can also see that um, wives of governors mm -hmm. have joined um, uh, hands. Uh, but again, as for the wives of the governors, some two weeks ago, it was alleged they chartered the plan to go give First Lady uh, some some uh, birthday. I think that was debunked. Uh, <laughs> Eventually, I, I think that once we have this kind of a thing, they should always come out quick mm. to debunk all of that, so mm. that um, we see them as uh, women, a virtual people. Uh, the younger ones should look forward to in terms of emulation. Mm -hmm. They should be seen as uh, mentors. So it's nice that those things have always been uh, debunked. It's also nice that they should uh, also be marching to the National Press uh, Council. Mm -hmm. So look, this story was ca carried in, in error. It never happened. Uh, so that um, uh, we, we, we have a good uh, quality, so to speak. Okay, now, uh, NAS has actually talked about, you know, revisiting other gender bills, but not the slots, you know, for women in parliament. Don't you think they're just, you know, trying to probably hush the women so, you know, they stop the protests? Well, um, uh, it's right that people will always think and interpret situations. Uh, 
I saw before now that the National Assembly at the point said, look, instead of having um, three senators per, per state, let us have four, so that the fourth is always a woman. Uh, but some people also think that, okay, let, the, let there be a concession. The three should be there, make a woman to just um, occupy the third seat. Uh, so that uh, you could say, okay, the central part, where the governor, uh, where the government house is, you can g give that that to to, to a woman, uh, because we're talking of inflation, we're talking of a uh, high cost of everything. You're now going to create the fourth. Why don't we, if we actually mean it, just give the woman a third position? I mean, a, a third seat, and uh, that could be the central. If you say, which uh, the side should therefore be given? In my own opinion, in my own opinion, you give it the central. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you say Kaduna Central, you, you give it the Kaduna Metropolis, and the woman will come from there. There's nothing wrong. If you say you have a Kogi West, Kogi East, then the central, and where the central is, uh, the center is, and that's where the governor is, give it to the woman. So I, I think it's it's good deal instead of creating this. Yeah. So when you create, where well, I, I think uh, it's my suggestion. Yeah. Interesting. Now, we're also seeing that uh, bandits ambushed and killed 63 vigilantes, you know, in Kebi State. And we're also hearing that some informants, you know, uh, gave information to repel bandits' attack. Yes. Let me, let me just tell you in a very short sentence. I went to change some tires last week. Then there was this woman frying this... Uh, corn, bean cake, yam, and by the roadside. Then she started parking suddenly. Okay. Some guys wanted to buy, so, Madam, where are you parking? I said, this phone call I just received is somebody calling me from FCT that task force will soon be in our area. Hmm. It was so interesting, I decided to wait. <laughs> Believe me, around 20 minutes, the task force came. In other words, there is an insider mm. in the task force mm. who indeed is uh, busy feeding a fellow villager or a relation or something. Mm. Look, we are coming to that place. And the woman just simply packed in and they came in. They never saw anything. <laughs> uh, well, those, they, they were going for demolition. They were not after Akala people. In other words, <clears throat> even when you have security agencies going for missions, you see that there are always moles, there are always Judases, people who indeed are ready to betray the, uh, the process by providing information to the bandits. Uh, so, uh, it, it says a lot. We thought that when we were told to register these phone lines, we should be able to track all this kind of uh, uh, bad guys in, in society. It's bad thing, it's bad omen, it's bad conduct, it's never the best. And that's why even when you are recruiting people in either police force, civil defense, army, air force, navy, security agencies, proper checking, proper profiling to know who really they are before they are enlisted or recruited and so that we don't have this kind of betrayers. Mm -hmm. And that's why Boko Haram the fight against Terrorism is taking a long time in Borono State, in northeast of Nigeria, and now in central Nigeria. We need to have people who indeed have the love for humanity, the love for, uh, for nationhood, for nation, and, and uh, so that banditry will come to an end. Well, um, these killings, is there a connection with the 200 you know, that were actually killed last week? <clears throat> you see, most of these things, you always have some people who will know security uh, plans. You begin to know even names of commanders. You begin to know names, I mean, where they reside. You begin to know the caliber, the kind of weapons they are carrying. You begin to know the routes they are taking. And you now betray that to bandits. So, yes, you see that it's always having to do with some people somewhere betraying a cause. Um, 
we are always supposed to be loyal to the country. We should not make bandits to sound and appear like heroes. Mm. We should make them look they are down there and the security agencies are up there. The security agencies are the dominant forces. They are the aggressors. They determine who is in charge when it comes to the fight against terrorism. Mm. And uh, therefore, we expect that people should rather provide information to security agencies and not the other way around. When you do all of that, I mean, what's your benefit? When indeed people have been killed just anyhow. But we expect that those who have taken up arms against fellow human beings, against their nation, should face the full scale, the wrath of the law. You know, from the look of things, it looks like uh, we have intelligence gathering problems in Nigeria. What do we go? What do we do from here? Uh, I, uh, honestly, you see, intelligence gathering, there's nothing wrong in recruiting taxi drivers, nothing wrong in recruiting shoe shiners, nothing wrong in recruiting market women and women uh, so that they serve as uh, intelligence people. Uh, I, I expect that the, sh the, the select security agencies should also infiltrate motor parks and be part of the show there. And um, there's nothing wrong when we, they, they, they fraternize with local hunters. Nothing wrong when you begin to move with traditional rulers, district heads, village heads, ward heads, because these will tend to know many of these uh, villagers here and there. And we expect that the security agencies should imbibe that kind of a thing. Mm. We should not just uh, believe in this formal training, you go to NDA, mm. go to crimes detecting uh, uh, schools. No, let us also imbibe the informal uh, sector when it comes to uh, crime detection, crime uh, det uh, deterrent and uh, uh, control. Okay, now um, I've heard, I've actually read reports, you know, where the presidency actually said that, you know, uh, banditry would actually end, you know, by the end of this year. Do you think they're actually winning the war or are the bandits themselves, you know, outsmarting and, you know... Let me be frank to you. I think they are win winning the wars. Those days that used to have this bombing here and there, we no longer hear them that. Those days that um, uh, bandits were storm places of worship, it, it's, it's rather a thing of the past. What they do is when they are hungry, you go to markets and uh, surround villages, carry their goods, carry their food, and uh, you go to feed, uh, 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 they go to feed themselves in, in, in the bushes. Um, I think that um, they are, the security agencies are winning. The bandits are never on top of their own game. That's why they are in involving this kind of a guerrilla tactics, hit and run. Mm. If you know you are capable, hit and stay. That's, <laughs> so, I, I, I think that the security stay. agencies are on top of the, uh, of the game. What remains is just this kind of betrayal we have in the system. And uh, like Bob Marley will say, a hungry man mm. is an, an angry, angry man. man. And also, when you say you leave busy fingers, having nothing to do, mm. so they, they just have as uh, willing tools mm. for uh, those who indeed do not mean good for society. Uh, so we need to create jobs. If you're having some jobs, mm. create some farms. I mean, let there be some lines of divide. Yes, cattle rearing, do it this way. Cattle, fa uh, those farmers, do it this way. Mm -hmm. This is where you go and let us be good to our conscience, mm -hmm. various conscience. I mean, we cannot just go killing. I want to kill on behalf of God. I want to kill, I mean, I go on killing spree, feeling like, no. We you actually shouldn't. have you know, a lot of Nigerian young men who are willing to fight for another country than, you know, uh, help fight against Boko Haram and <laughs> you know, and you know maybe, maybe they're, they're, they're yeah, scared that, to that, fight that for the country because there is quite a lot what of being said skepticism. At the, at the Ukrainian embassy mm -hmm. here, I said some Nigerians are willing to... Truly, I, I was <laughs> asking some people, say, Oga, I will go fight you. 
<laughs> you know, so why would some people want to go fight in another country, mm. defend that country, yet you don't want to defend this country? I've also met some people, a journalist who was at the point though long ago, said, look, if I can go out illegally and they catch me in some big countries and I'm in prison, look, I will read before I come back, I have my PhD. I, I, you, you can see the kind of thinking of, uh, of some people. Uh, therefore, it calls to mind uh, government's um, um, contract with the, with the electorate. Please serve the nation. Yes. Don't go into all this politicking of uh, denying mm. some areas, some people, because of either religion or where they belong or where they come from or because of tribe. No. Once you have been elected, you have been elected. Be magnanimous when it comes to providing dividends of democracy. Okay. Uh, you know, it seems like there's bad news, you know, for the aviation sector. Just last week, mm -hmm. we were talking about uh, cutting down the cost, you know, of airfares. And now we're seeing the uh, price of diesel going quite very, very high. Well, what is really happening? It's, 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 uh, it, it, once the prices of any commodity, once the prices of commodities are high, of course there's going to be ripple effects generally. Um, if they go to buy aviation fuel at a very high cost, and you want them to cut down price for passengers, they are not Father Christmas. Like it's always said, even in seeing Father Christmas, you paid at the gate. And Father Christmas will pretend to have given you a gift mm -hmm. it's because you have paid <laughs> at the gate. And so we uh, honestly, since we were seeing about three weeks now, mm. petrol scarcity or fuel scarcity, of course now it has gone into aviation. Mm. Now it's going into uh, a diesel. Look at many uh, uh, offices, government agencies, running business via diesel. Look at the prices. Now it has gone to aviation. Of course, it's going to affect passengers. It's going to affect service. As I, I, I expect that um, Nigeria being the first in terms of crude oil supply mm. in Africa, I think we should also be making our refineries to work. I was just seeing uh, some days ago, former president uh, Jacob Zuma, whether it's through you know, social media, uh -huh. his photograph was there, but there was a caption underneath, commenting on uh, fuel scarcity in Nigeria. He said, look, when you look at what Saudi Arabia has done, United Arab Emirates, and some other Arab countries, what they've done, use oil to do to, for their countries. He said, I wonder whether Nigeria has coconut oil mm -hmm. and not foil mm -hmm. and not oil. You see, even though, yes, <coughs> the man is being tried, if he actually said that, he says a lot about us. How are we the first? And what's that number in OPEC? We are even officials in OPEC. Secretary General of OPEC, you know, we should be able. OPEC has even given us more latitude, export more. But are we taking, are we producing that, those mm -hmm. barrels? Are we? And um, during the Gulf War days, when you had what was called uh, the windfall, there was an escrow account. If your budget was pecked on this, now you are getting that money. Now the war came, and there was high prices of crude oil. So the difference and some other thing, they created an account, and that was how Petroleum uh, Trust Fund was given birth, and President Muhammad Buhari was given that mm -hmm. to manage. And of course, you could see some roads, you see PTF. Mm -hmm. You go to investors, you see lecture halls, theaters, hostels, you see PTF. PTF. Also, it's a bad thing, like the white man would say, fishing in troubled waters. That it's only when situations go bad, some people smile to bang. So, if during the Gulf War, yes, lives were lost, but Nigeria 
was gaining economically. Mm. Now we're having Russia-Ukraine conflict. Crude oil prices are going higher. Is it a plus to Nigeria? That's the kind of fishing in troubled waters. Should Nigeria be smiling to the bank because mm. some people are being killed somewhere? But if it happens, what indeed are we using the excess or what are we going to use it for? So these are things we should be looking out for. The economic team of the president, they should, uh, uh, I mean, Look at, into it. be looking at all of this. Okay, now just to cushion the effect, you know, that uh, the increased price in aviation fuel would actually have on, you know, uh, customers. Uh, I read a report where some airlines have, you know, resulted to, you know, buying smaller airplanes. Yeah, if you buy smaller airplanes, you also pick uh, little passengers. Mm. It, it's, it's just the, the same thing. <laughs> but uh, the ripple effect is, how will you also buy little uh, cargo planes? Mm. You buy little cargo planes, and you have quite a lot to, to be ferried here. <coughs> how do you do with the aviation fuel? Now we're talking of uh, Nasara State, Kaduna State, Kano State. Less fuel. All of them having uh, uh, dry seaports. Aeroplanes will, will, will land there with, with cargo because Lagos ports are becoming congested via the ships. And so you can now uh, fly in and, and, and land. So how will you handle that? Yeah, okay, I go buy some little uh, cargo planes. Uh, so I, it does not add up at all. I think it's better for us to simply uh, make our refineries to work. Mm. Is it but is it possible for these planes to be able to accommodate almost as much passengers, you know, as the large planes can? Uh, because one thing I noticed about the smaller planes is they're kind of, you know, they're not as comfortable as the big planes because they're kind of, you know, packed. Yeah, they are, they are packed and uh, sometimes when you have turbulent weather, uh, the impact is there. You mm. just uh, <laughs> make uh, like some people funny. high blood uh, to <laughs> pressure. <laughs> Everybody will now say, God, if I survive this now, I will commit no sin again. But the moment you learn again, you remember all the, the, the bad things you, you, you want to, to do. Uh, so in as much as we laugh over these things, they serve as uh, some comic reliefs, but there are serious national uh, issues mm -hmm. that um, the aviation sector should, should be looking at. Um, people of conscience, let us uh, help this, this country. I was thinking that in terms of uh, turning around maintenance of uh, the four refineries in the country, mm. um, the government should have simply said, look, let's give one, one of them, select one and give them full, uh, give it full attention and uh, so that it produce at optimal uh, capacity, maximum capacity and provide Nigerians what they want. While also uh, promoting uh, these modular refineries um, in terms of providing uh, petrol. Uh, you know, we expect all of that. All right, welcome back. It is still uh, Trust TV, and you're watching a Daybreak. And now we're still reviewing the papers, and uh, this uh, particular disheartening story of uh, Bami Shea, the lady who uh, entered a BRT bus and, you know, uh, was killed in the process. You know, we have uh, the governor, Sangwo Lu, slamming critics, a BRT suspending operations, and also family demanding for justice. And we still have Ben Shemang, you know, uh, in the studio with us. If you could actually, you know, uh, touch a little bit on this particular story. Hmm. My little understanding of Yoruba language, Ba Mishé, mm. help me to do it. Ba Mishé. Very lovely name. Yes. In other words, she's crying for all, of, for all of us. Help me to get justice. Bam Mishé. You know, and what are we going to do? And I want to call on passengers in, in, in particular. This one chance thing, <laughs> even in Abuja here. Yeah. The moment you're boarding a taxi or a cab, or painted in particular, and some people begin to go out, then you enter, you are now at the center. It's suspicious. Don't join. Don't. Some people begin to tell you how they ought to print so 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 money and mm -hmm. the thing is this this mm -hmm. Madam or oh, Oga, oh see. But what bad will how much what are you carrying? Is money our oh, oh, just this, this we need to print so so so, but mm -hmm. we need so 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 chemical. 
People should be wise. This thing has been there for this long. Now back to <laughs> Bamiche. You bought a vehicle. Her instincts were telling her, look, 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 look. This place looks suspicious. Why am I the only one here? And she started passing information mm. immediately. The unfortunate thing is she was not in control of this of this steering. Mm. And now, only for this thing to happen, the driver, you parked uh, your bus, you disappeared. You didn't disappear to a police station. Where were it? This thing happened in Lagos. Where were you found in Ogun State? Hmm. It, it doesn't add up at all. So your innocence is like there is a connivance mm -hmm. somewhere. And that's why when we were, we, we we're talking of even the security agencies uh, joining to be conductors, I mean, uh, joining to be drivers to checkmate all of these things. There's nothing wrong in, uh, but here we are. A driver is, is I mean, quite a lot of things are, are suspicious in, in this matter. But the story remains. Bam, Michel, let us look for justice. Let justice roll like a stream that must not be blocked. Mm. It must roll to its destination. And that's why every Nigeria, it, it's a good thing that you can see that uh, this thing does not have a religious coloration. It doesn't have tribal coloration. People from all walks of life, people from every religion, they are condemning all of this and they're calling on government. Let us collectively help to find justice, give justice to the, to, the, to the family. And how do we stop all of this? And that also brings to mind, why is it that some of her vital parts have already been, been, been taken? Uh, these are ritual things, and when politics is coming, you see this kind of thing, they, are, they, they, they become uh, so high. Some people are already calling that, uh, uh, in terms of uh, Nollywood, where well, you have this magic, mm. some people begin to play some pranks. Uh, you do this, money will just come. Money magic, scenes that portray um, um, magic, blood, 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 uh, magic, blood yeah. money, mm. blood bath. Mm. Uh, uh, they should be removed from the, the, the Nigerian uh, 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 Nollywood uh, and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, they, they, sometimes they, they sound too uh, gory. As, as some of these details, and um, <coughs> we expect that those who are in that industry too should should help if actually it influences. But it's for them to also make some research. Mm -hmm. Is it true that when you watch this, it gives you a way of, of making money? And those who have been caught must be squeezed properly to ensure. Look, who is sponsoring who? And uh, uh, once upon a time, there was one. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, man under or show the bridge in Lagos mm -hmm. that was caught with all sorts of even when people it was not easy having that phone they call not nine not mm. and uh, they, they were like Turaya phones that guy had them and they were he had human parts in his custody and under the bridge that people believed he was uh, he, he was mad if he was mad how was he getting to Raya? And we expected that the telecommunications <laughs> industry then would trace calls and see who indeed this man was communicating with. He had already grabbed a, a lady when he was, he, he was seen. And that was how people rounded that area, come and realized the man was speaking good English. He was simply pretending to be mad. Uh, so we expect the security agencies. Was it a Shakespeare? Mm -hmm. They said there is, a, <laughs> there is an art in madness. Sometimes that madness you think somebody is, is, is engaged in is really not mad. He's just pretending. He's right. playing somebody's uh, script mm -hmm. in society. Uh, so I, I, I think the security agencies should look at it seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the past few months, there's been, you know, so many stories about ritual killings and all that. And then in most cases, it's, you know, it happens after the deed has been done. We get to hear about it. But how can one actually protect themselves before it happens, before it's too late? Yes. Your ability to begin to shout. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I want to get out of this vehicle. I want to I'll break this windscreen. Mm. Yes. That is one. Two, sometimes you hear that somebody will bring one handkerchief mm -hmm. in a car 
he will do something, and before you know it, the victim, the victim is already uh, dozing. Look, your instincts will always tell you something. Once you are boarding, you don't feel like, I mean, just come out. That is just obey your instincts. Uh, uh, sometimes her, her friend they, they, actually advised her to drop at the nearest uh, station, but I don't know. I, I I don't think it actually worked out. I don't think. It yes, was and uh, sometimes uh, uh, you find, especially those from the north, you say that oh, Allah no, Allah no. Yasu. I mean, no, no. it was no. ordained so. Oh no. We should not be blaming God for everything. We should also take precautions while also ensuring that the security agencies, those people. We employees sweeping, carrying leather, debris here and there <laughs> along the, I mean, from stadium up to uh, Giri Junction. Can we begin to look at those women as, as informants? Yes, we, we, we can, provided they can also stop uh, flippancy. We should engage some of these taxes. I, and I want to tell you, some of these repentant fellows, those who have uh, grabbed, how do you do it? Do you have a place where you usually uh, meet? And those who have fallen victims, they should also speak out. They took me to so 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 place. They took us to so 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 mm. place, and this was how we 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 we, we escaped. The whole lot of them. But I want to uh, Zainab. Let us also for, forget. I've seen that in daily trust there. Uh, I mean, let us also clap for good people in society. They said a pastor's son went and uh, built a borehole a mm -hmm. for a mosque. Yes. Mm. You know, I think we should be clapping for those people. We need them in society. Mm -hmm. Just like I was also seeing some clips where a reverend father somewhere in Gwagwalada area uh, helped to complete a mosque. So look, we are neighbors. This is a church. This is a mosque. And I see that uh, for a long time, <coughs> excuse me, for a long time they have not finished, the Muslims have not finished building their mosque. When God the Imam said, gentlemen, look, we are neighbors. I mean, why are we neighbors? We are here. And who is your neighbor? Let us help to conclude this mosque. And it was so agreed. And so you can see that under that situation, the worshippers, Christian church, worshippers, Muslim uh, church, a uh, mosque there, they turn out to be good friends. These are people we should be uh, uh, promoting. We should uh, look for avenues of this nature mm. to ensure that um, friendship mm. cuts across. And I, 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 I still remember, <laughs> sorry, <Okay. clears throat> those days yeah. when Kaduna, Kaduna and, uh, and Katsina were still one. Mm. You pack students from Katsina, Duten, Mamali, uh, Gaura, you pack them to Southern Kaduna. Mm. You pack those ones from Southern Kaduna up there. It created a kind of uh, unity, mm -hmm. you know. But today we are not seeing all of these things. But whatever happened to, you know, the toll-free emergency line, you know, just like the 911 in the U.S., um, there was a time where Nigeria actually had the 199, or was it the 119 a long time ago? You know, these numbers are actually easy to, you know, uh, remember, and if one is in trouble, you just dial the number immediately, and then... I agree with you. Hope it comes for you. <clears throat> I agree with you, but you see, we... We ought to advertise those numbers very, very frequently. Because the number we have now is quite long and yes. lengthy. How we can should, one remember? We should have numbers that are so simple, three digits, mm -hmm. four digits, mm -hmm. you know, and they should cut across in terms of um, community service. All um, GSM companies should have a common line. They could call, have it as 1111. Three, 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 three. All of them is common so that you, I mean, people who are in distress can always call. And there has to be a control room com uh, where you have a combined team mm. of security agencies the police, the navy, the air force, or you select the intelligence agencies. Uh, you, they, they just have uh, a, a, a room somewhere where they monitor or wait for this kind of calls, uh, you know. And the moment and people should just be standing by these vehicles you see, uh, police vehicles, rapid uh, response uh, team here and there. Uh, once there is some uh, call in, in Yanya, then there's a taxi. Uh, I mean, there is a, a vehicle there, they just zoom into the, the, the area. Uh, so, look, 
intelligence will have to work. And GSM providers, service product, providers must always have or should have. I, I think the National Assembly should ensure that uh, a thing of this nature comes on, on, on board so that you have simple numbers. Children will memorize that in school, just like they say traffic jam, travel, red light says stop, green light, um, uh, yellow says ready, uh, green says go. Some of these children, they memorize this and they know it. They will say, hey, I'm sorry to say this. Mm. I broke the light. My son said, Daddy, they told us in school that when it is red, you stop. Mm. <laughs> I had to apologize to him, <laughs> you know. And that's yes. So that tells you when it hangs in the children's mind, it is just there. They have always fallen uh, uh, victims. And we, the bigger ones, too. There, there are instances. I'm sorry, there's a lady in my office. She's always falling victim of people grabbing her, they use uh -huh. her. They'll go and withdraw her money mm -hmm. using her, 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 her ATM. Her ATM. Mm -hmm. They'll take away the money and they abandon. See, they'll still take her. When they reach somewhere, they push her away. She's always a victim. Mm -hmm. She's always a victim. May God protect her and many others. Amen. 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 Now, let's uh, talk a bit about politics. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing a lot of drama going on in the APC and also in the PDP, all at the same time, just as we're heading towards the 2023 general elections. <coughs> in the APC, they're set to release, you know, the zoning formula. And also there are speculations that they might suspend, you know, their zonal congresses. In the PDP, on the other hand, uh, the PDP has submitted Umay's replacement to INEC. Uh, despite this, you know, the sacked governor is still hanging closely to a seat. You see, when the governors, every small problem, there is fire in the market, the governor will run to the president. Dissidents have come. You will run to the president. APC had crisis. Governors will run to the president. Too many, too much things, too many things on the top of the table. Yes, they said the box stops on his, uh, on his table. But at the point, why are you a governor? That place you, uh, you are supposed to administer. If we're saying let's have a state uh, policing, you, I mean, let's have that so that much of the, uh, the, uh, the load is taken from the, tables, uh, from the table of the president. Now, we are talking politics. When APC was in crisis, you had this convention that never came. Mm. Every time we are waiting for the president to provide solution. <laughs> president, okay, I'll give my solution. And this is it. The next thing is, no, this one signed by the president every page, and uh, the president has uh, uh, crowned someone he likes. No, it was uh, re uh, received under pretext, it presented and they started accusing a particular governor uh, from the north. It, it, that already tells you that um, politically we are not yet getting it right when it comes to party politics. Apart from imposition, you look at it. Tell me, in PDP, tell me the, uh, the, 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 the chairman, national the chairman, that actually left office with honors. Now we have APC. Tell me the chairman that has left with honors intact. So it's a whole gamut of things that um, when we're talking of those who indeed can manage crisis, manage conflict, the parties are in conflict within themselves and against themselves. How do we come out of it? And as well, we need that act that politician who indeed is capable of making uh, things work. You're having a, a situation where a governor is being um, voted into using so 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 platform. That your former party didn't like you, you moved to another one, that one gave you mandate. You become a governor. Now you return to where you feel you should belong. But the law is saying the party belongs at uh, the vote belongs to the to, to the party it once happened kogi and rivers Omai, omahia celestine you know and so we expect that um now that they are still amending this law let the law be so definite 
once you are in this party, you shouldn't move. Yeah. If you move, then you, you, you leave your position. Uh, the governor is saying, um, of, uh, I mean, um, Abon Abon said, yeah. he's saying that, look, it is an unusual, it was procured. The way he's putting it, I don't mm. want to put it here, is like the judiciary received some inducements mm. to deliver that kind of a justice. We should not ridicule the, ju the judiciary. I, it's my opinion. Neither should political parties, too, be ridiculing themselves before the eyes of the electorate. We need political parties that will not impose candidates. We need political parties that will have internal democracies. We need political parties that will ensure that this candidate that is needed by the electorate is the one actually uh, featured. We need a system where I, now INEG is at the crossroads now. The ruling at the High Court is saying, look, give a certificate to, uh, to, 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 to the candidates of the, P, uh, of the PDP. Now, will I not rush to court to look for stay of execution? Will I not just wake up and say, I hereby do it, I'm obeying the law? Now, it's natural that Omai will use what we call the state machinery to go to court and it will now prolong the entire process. In fact, judgment from the Supreme Court can come after 2023. Now, if you therefore rule that um, Omai never won the election, it was PDP that won the election, it means that you'll be calling him a dismissed governor. Hmm. Ah, so, is that what uh, we're going to look for in, in, in our own kind of uh, polity? Ah, so, they should imbibe the three things they're talking about. Indirect primaries, direct primaries and consensus. Mm -hmm. And the consensus they're talking about, they said, if people contested against you, if they agreed that, yes, you are now, we have agreed you that you should be, then they should sign a column. Will these politicians agree to all of this? Oh, we hope now to see we are that. still also talking <laughs> of uh, the section that says, look, if you are a political appointee, you have to resign because you want to contest. Some people are saying, if you don't do it that way, they already have advantages. A governor who is going for a second term, for example, all his SAs are already candidates to vote for him. And when you look at some of the voting patterns, mm. the ballot papers are already numbered. The seats are already numbered. If you go the voting day, seat number one is automatically occupied by His Excellency, the governor. Mm. Seat two, the deputy governor. Others in that way. Now, if, the, if His Excellency is not voted for a second time as a candidate, mm. of course you can go back and edit this. Okay, seat number 20 downwards and never voted for us. Look at it. So that does not augur well for mm. our own kind of uh, democracy. Well, we hope to see change, you know, happen subsequently as the election period is underway. Thank you so much for coming on the program this Thank morning. You. Thank you. Uh, we've pleasure. been talking to the director, News Voice of Nigeria, Ben Sherman, giving us perspectives on some of the stories making headway on our dailies this morning. Well, the situation where you find that they look like the not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.